Joe is loading. Everyone, get your grinders ready. I'm going to grab mine as well. Aha, hello. <laughs> We're up. We're here. No worries. Yeah. Uh, technical I'm difficulties, sorry. No, 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 no worries. Uh, the technical difficulties are all mine. I'm going to quickly grab my Commandante grinder. One second. Okay. I should probably grab one too. One sec. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to, I, I won't be focusing necessarily on this the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be talking about why something like this is really important, but um, yeah, if you have one, All right. then you can play with it at the same time. Okay, great. Uh, quick question, Joe, are you on Wi-Fi or are you using your mobile phone uh, network? Uh, I'm on Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm all alone in the Comandante office. Uh, no okay. here. Uh, <laughs> there's a nice internet connection here. Flat, all right. So maybe not so good. Okay. All right. We're going to start recording and over to you. I'm going to move my little window away so uh, we can give you the full um, attention. And uh, yeah, excited to see your presentation. Wonderful. Right. Okay. Uh, can, you see, Why? Um, can you see my screen as well? Yeah, it's just loading now. Okay, wonderful. Because um, it would probably help everyone to be able to see the presentation that I'm doing. Um, okay. But maybe you can tell me when you can see it. Oh. What did you say? Can um, you see what I'm, what I'm looking at now? Hold on a second. Yes, we can see your screen. Look? Okay. You can see me. Can you hear me as well still? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, in that case, um, we can we can make a start. So um, before we start, just in terms of grinding, grinding is a massive topic. So uh, what I want to try and do in, uh, in this little 20 minutes that I have um, is cover some basics so that there's something for everyone, um, but also go into more detail. So uh, my goal is that everyone can learn at least one thing. Um, so to have a look at what we're going to talk about, um, I want to go through the, oh, I can hear myself. That's really disconcerting. Ah! Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about the basic principles of grinding and what's going on. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, dialing in your grind to adapt to your taste. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, we need to understand why it's important to have a good grinder and uh, why uh, it's, oh, this is, I can hear myself talking. It's really strange. Can, uh, can we do anything about that? It's, I'm on headphones, so uh, I, maybe I'll just take my headphones off. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, I want to look at the basic principles of grinding, what's going on, uh, what different grind settings are, uh, what that means, uh, and how we adapt uh, our grind setting to suit our taste. Um, and to understand why that's important, what's going on, we need to look at grind performance, and uh, that basically means particle distribution. So we want to think about the impact this can ha have on taste and brewing and uh, the considerations. Um, of that too. So grinding is all about accessing flavor. So we want to get our water into these little pockets that we can see on this micro, uh, microscope image here so that we can take out all of those delicious solubles from those pockets and get them into our cup. So I think everyone will be familiar with um, grind settings and grind settings for different brew methods. Uh, obviously, what that is all about is increasing or decreasing uh, the access to the solubles. How many uh, of these pockets are available, i.e. Uh, more pockets is a larger surface area, is a finer grind. Uh, fewer pockets is a lower surface area, is a coarser grind. And generally speaking, um, this is relative to the contact time for the brewing method. So things like uh, e-brick uh, and espresso, uh, are much finer grinds than filter coffee grinds, which uh, have a longer contact time and a coarser brew. So 
this is how we tend to find our starting point. So if someone gives you a recommended recipe um, or gives you a recommended grind setting, you're going to be placing yourself somewhere on here. And brewing is always about, uh, or dialing in to get the best out of your coffee is always about starting with this starting point and then going from there. So with your given tried and tested recipe, keep everything the same, brew it, taste it, and evaluate the taste. So if you feel that your coffee is tasting a bit too weak or a bit sour, these are kind of signs of under extraction. That's why we say you want to go finer, increase the access to these pockets, to these solubles and get more extraction. If you brew your coffee with your given recipe and you're, after you've found your starting point and you think, ah, but my starting point is grind setting, it tastes, makes the coffee taste too dry, too bitter, then you need to go coarser. So please take grind settings, recommended grind settings always as a starting point. Be ready to make a brew, follow the recipe carefully and consistently, and then trust your taste buds. Finding the best coffee uh, and finding the best recipe for a coffee is all, all, always about finding what tastes best to you. So please follow your taste buds. So we always do this by sharing recipes. Um, we have uh, grinders with different grind settings, which uh, causes some challenges for this. Um, you know, some grinders have a number system, some grinders have uh, different uh, systems with no numbers on, like the Commandante here with, uh, with stepped settings. Um, so we really want to just bear in mind that we're using the recommendations to find a starting point along our scale of super fine to coarse and then being flexible to adjust accordingly. Another really important thing, even if your friend has the same grinder as you do, it doesn't mean that the same setting is going to get you the same result. Now, this is simply due to manufacturing tolerances um, and physics. Just make sure that you're always ready to brew, taste, adjust accordingly, and get to know your grinder because your grinder behaves like your grinder does, and it doesn't necessarily behave like your friend's grinder, even if it's the same. Okay, so we want to get the best taste of our, uh, out of our coffee. So we're choosing a grind setting for the recipe. It's like aiming at a target. And if you have an excellent grinder, it means you have a great technique and control to aim at this target. So that means accuracy and consistency to hit that target from brew to brew. So if you imagine uh, uh, an archer with a bow and arrow, someone who is highly skilled can hit the target uh, accurately in the middle from shot to shot to so every single time. Having an excellent grinder also means that when you are tasting your brew, the grinder is really showing you uh, the flavors, all the flavors. It's, it's excellent flavor clarity. This means that you can really dial in your coffee much more easily. So picture your favorite painting or your favorite photograph. Now, if you're looking at your favorite painting or photograph with someone else's glasses on, then you might be able to recognize the shapes and the colors um, but you won't necessarily be able to see all of the details. So having an excellent grinder means that you can really get access to all of the detail um, and you can really appreciate what's going on, which makes it easier for you to find the right setting for your coffee, your water and your recipe. Okay, but how do we judge how good a grinder is? How can we say this is an excellent grinder? This is not an excellent grinder. Um, to do that, we need to look at particle size and particle distribution. So how homogeneous uh, the coffee that we've ground uh, is, how close it is to the grind setting that we wanted. So to do that, we can't really talk in broad terms uh, like super fine, fine, medium and coarse. We need to talk precisely in terms of microns. So just to... Um, quickly go into detail on that one mic uh, one millimeter sorry one millimeter is 1000 microns so just on the line here between uh, well, in the middle of course is about one millimeter so all of this is happening in a very small range uh, so just to give you uh, more of an idea 
if we think about human hair, for example, uh, a really light blonde human hair is usually around 50 to 70 microns. Um, a dark human hair is normally about double that. And uh, a red blood cell uh, is normally about seven to eight microns. So microns really give us a system of measurement uh, that means we can look at uh, particle size and particle distribution in detail. Okay, so this is how we measure particle distribution. This is how we visualize it. So some of you might be thinking, ah, oh, sick, a graph. This is exactly what I need to, to understand this. Some of you might be thinking, oh shit, this is getting quite deep already. Um, but stick with it. Um, being able to understand these graphs uh, is the key to understanding what's going on, why your grinder is important, and uh, what you need to think about. So as we can see here, this is, uh, this is sand. And this sand is bought for an aquarium. Um, actually on the packaging for the sand, it says sand size 500 microns. Um, as you can see, we have uh, a spread of uh, different particle sizes here. We have the most commonly occurring particle size, which is the peak of our curve. You can see um, along the bottom, we have different particle sizes from naught to 900 plus. And on the left hand side with the percentage, it's what percentage of our sample is uh, in that size. So the top of the peak, are the most commonly occurring particle sizes. Uh, as you can see here, it's not actually 500. It's more about 560. Um, so uh, false advertising. Um, and we have a distribution, a spread of different particle sizes um, because effectively, you know, we're working with averages. If you have a sample of particles, it's extremely unlikely that you would uh, get millions of sand particles all the same size. And uh, if we look at what that's like in terms of coffee, um, ah, sorry, I need to show you <laughs> how we measure that before we look at it in terms of coffee. Um, we're, in order to get these lines, uh, we're measuring this uh, with um, a machine which is taking hundreds of photos a second measuring the size of each individual particle as they pass through a very small channel. So obviously this is not something that you can do uh, easily at home. Um, this is something that we can do in our lab uh, with this special equipment. Um, and it's important to be aware that using your eyesight to judge how good your grinder is can be difficult, can be mis misleading. I mean, you, these super fine particles down on the left-hand side, you might you can't really tell the difference between something that's 50 or something that's 70 microns. Um, and even using a sieve uh, with different sieving, uh, different filters um, is not really going to give you enough detail to see exactly what's going on. I mean, you can't even uh, really split anything below 200 microns with a sieve because it's simply too fine and everything sticks together. So now looking at coffee, like you can see uh, here, that was a geisha on that curve. And if we have a look at a really nice particle distribution curve with coffee, um, we can see that this is what you can expect. So along the bottom, I've labeled, again, our broad terms of super fine, fine, medium, and coarse. And uh, as you can see here, we, we have a bit of everything. Now, the peak of this curve is the target that we're aiming for. So we've set the grind. And on this grinder with this setting, uh, the target grind setting is just below 800 microns. So this is a sort of a typical filter coffee grind setting. And uh, like I said, this is a really nice distribution, but we still have fines and we still have boulders. So the fines are on the left hand side, these really powdery dust particles and the boulders on the right. Now, it's really important to know that having this spread of everything is inevitable. Roasted coffee is really brittle. So if you imagine breaking, snapping spaghetti or cutting bread or eating biscuits, every time uh, you break into those materials, um, you create dust. And with coffee going through a grinder, every contact you have between the coffee beans and the burr 
And every contact that you have between coffee particles and other coffee particles is going to create more of these superfine particles over on the left. Um, at the same time, um, if you look at the photo in the top right here, you can see that the table salt um, has lovely round particles, which are very even. Um, it's, it's a bit easier with something like crystals um, and with things like our sand, but coffee uh, is an organic material. Uh, it's very irregular and you can see there uh, in the coffee and there's a little bit of polenta still sticking out on the right hand side of the photo. The particle shapes and sizes uh, are different. And because it breaks up into funny shapes, um, sometimes you can have a particle that falls out of the gap. Um, and that would be these boulders that we see over on the right hand side of the graph. So what an excellent coffee grinder can achieve is an efficient grind, which reduces the fines, um, and a precise grind, which is going to reduce the boulders and give you more of what you want up in the middle. So just to put this into perspective, um, if we compare this wonderful uh, particle distribution curve from an excellent grinder with some really basic uh, grinding equipment that you might find in your kitchen or in your shed, you can see what happens. Now, this is uh, kind of um, half organized chaos. Um, if we're using something like a blade grinder, uh, which is the blue line, uh, a pestle and mortar, this ceramic or stone spice um, grinder, which is here, the green line, um, or using something like a hammer, which is the red line, we're going to get a bit of everything. So um, the taste impact here is that you have a really uneven extraction. Uh, you have less of what you want, what you're aiming for, and you have much more superfines extracting more and much more boulders extracting less. And even if you have uh, some entry level grinders um, or an entry level grinder, which, you know, you can change the grind setting. Uh, it's got a basic ceramic burr. You can see that the result really is not that different to even the really basic uh, pieces of equipment that we had before. And if you look up the top left of the, the diagram here, this uh, ceramic Burr is producing loads of superfines, even more than the blade grinder. And for those of you who like to make pour overs, um, these kind of superfines could be blocking your paper filter. Um, so it's going to slow things down and it's going to give you more over extraction. So that's why we want to have a really great grinder so that we can achieve our target more accurately um, and achieve our target more consistently. And that precision is going to give us flavor clarity because it's an even extraction and it's going to make our hunt for the delicious taste of our coffee much, much easier. So as we go into the last five minutes, um, I want to look um, at the impact of your grind setting on your brewing and your taste. So here we have a, another really nice um, example of a photo grind setting. And uh, you can see again, I've marked super fine, fine, medium and coarse to see where we are. So the target here at the top of the curve is just under a thousand microns or a millimeter. And uh, if we compare this uh, with espresso, um, with an espresso grind setting, we can see that the espresso grind setting is producing obviously uh, loads more particles at a different target size, at this fine target size, just over 300 microns. It's also producing loads more dust of the superfine particles because there's just more contact between beans and burr and more contact between beans and beans. Um, at the same time, we have basically no boulders here. And you can imagine that when you're moving your grind setting, you can see what effect this is having. So if you uh, even if you're adjusting in a small range um, for a filter coffee, you can see that the finer settings are going to produce more superfines and fewer boulders. And going to, for a coarser grind setting is going to give you fewer superfines and more of these boulders. So it's going to affect the speed of your brew um, for your given recipe, you know, with all other variables fixed. 
And obviously this affects the extraction and that explains why we notice a difference in taste. Okay. The other thing that we really need to think about is the coffee. Now, you, you can see by looking at these six beans here that different coffees uh, really are very different. Um, now, that's in terms of variety, that's in terms of processing, that's in terms of density, uh, beans being roasted differently. And if we have a look inside, you can see that these different beans all have extremely different structures. And that means that they're all going to break differently. Uh, they're all going to react differently. Um, and it's because, again, this is organic material. Now, um, I know that someone mentioned I like to make bread. So here's, for you, here's a photo for you. Um, <laughs> organic matter is beautifully inconsistent. If you look at the structure here, we have a very irregular pattern uh, within the bread. And coffee is also irregular, as we saw before. No bean is the same. That, it's, it's no surprise to people that we need different grind settings uh, for different coffees. Everyone uh, who's worked on an espresso machine and played around with the grind settings will see quick differences in small changes in grind settings. But it's really important to remember this when we're brewing coffee at home because um, otherwise, you know, I sometimes get the question, ah, I think my grinders stopped working because suddenly uh, my brew is running uh, a minute slower. Um, but changing the coffee and keeping everything else the same can make a huge, uh, a huge impact on what happens and how it then tastes. So it's really important that we are able to remain flexible and adapt to different coffees. So before I finish, let's just have a look at a few examples of how different, different coffees can be. So here we have a natural Robusta red and a washed Robusta green. And you can see that going through the same grinder at the same setting, the target size, the, the peak of our curve uh, is about the same, but we have very different results in the bottom left in our super fine uh, area here. Here with three different varieties, three different origins, three different processes, we have uh, a, a honey, um, a red honey from Costa Rica, uh, a washed Ethiopian, and a natural Brazilian in red, green, and blue. And you can see that all of these coffees going through the same grinder at the same setting uh, are not only different down at the superfine level, but they're also very different in the fines area between two and 400. Um, they're different at the peak, uh, at the target grind setting, and the boulder activity is also very different. So again, different coffees, different results. Here's even more so when we compare some Robustas and some uh, and uh, washed Ethiopian Arabica. Um, so all of this shows why we need to be flexible and why we need to change grind settings. So before I talk too long and answer uh, all of the questions you're hopefully dying to ask, um, just to conclude, please, when you're thinking about your recipe, take your recipe, um, take a tried and tested recipe. The grind setting recommendation is a starting point. And it, I really mean a starting point for your journey of dialing in because you need to dial in to suit your taste preference. Uh, again, the best tasting coffee is the one you like the most. So use your grinder to help you do that. And as I said, having an excellent grinder really does help you to do that more easily, but it also helps get the nicest flavor out of your coffee. Um, it would be unfair to say that there's a best grinder. There are loads of really good ones out there. Um, uh, we are happy with how ours works, <laughs> but be ready to adapt uh, to suit your recipe and to suit your coffee. It's about the journey. So please enjoy dialing in your brews and uh, appreciate uh, all of the hard work that's gone into those wonderful coffees, getting them to, to you so that you can grind them and brew them at home. Okay. That's me. Uh, I don't think I can hear you, Alex. I can hear myself, which is very bizarre. It's really hard to talk and hear myself. Ah, I can, yeah. I can still hear myself. It's really weird. 
Yeah, that's probably because you have your um, your headphones on, I, I assume, but I'm not sure. Anyway, thank you so much for that, Joe. That was really, really, really interesting. I, I was actually just grinding some coffee while I was listening to you, and I'm just going to get ahead of the schedule slightly by making a quick error press. Um, I know Vendelin will be... You uh... the coffee break, Alex. That was before. <laughs> yeah. I know, we were just trying to... We were fighting with so many like technical problems, you won't believe it. Um, but yeah, so we've got a lot of questions for you, Joe. Um, I think okay. I'm just going to quickly move on to uh, the Q&A. So let's have a look at some of the questions that were posted here. Um, OK, I thought this one here was actually quite, quite an interesting one. Um, hold on, let me just get it onto the screen. Uh, questions. Oh, um, water's above my head. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, I just need to quickly no go back to the, here we are. So um, this question here from uh, Journey Geyer. Uh, are hand grinders more consistent than electric grinders, generally speaking? Generally speaking, no. Um, I would say that's really to do with uh, the fact that there are lots of really entry level hand grinders out there. There are only a few hand grinders really going for uh, quality in terms of yep. performance. Um, there are lots of hand grinders which are designed to break beans, uh, but they're a bit more of a toy rather than a tool. Um, and more electric grinders are designed as a tool rather than as a toy. Um, so. All right. Can you, uh, can you just quickly, dis quite, what, what would you say is the difference between a tool and a toy then? Um, I think that, you know, there's a difference between um, the goal of the machine. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there are lots of hand grinders out there developed at a low price um, meaning that the manufacturers are limited in terms of what technology they can put into those uh, grinders. And a base it also has to do with materials, of course, um, right? As we saw um, in terms of the, I don't know if you can still see my screen, but um, in terms of the yep. uh, grind distribution comparisons that I had on this slide here. Yep. These entry-level grinders, which are often hand grinders with a ceramic burr, would end up with a particle distribution similar to this pink line here. And if you compare that to a grinder like ours, which is designed for performance, giving you this pink curve here, then you can really see that you have loads more of what you want and much less of what you don't want. Don't want. All right. Yeah. OK. Cool. Um, let's see. Question a bit. I think, I mean, it, it is obviously, you know, a very subjective thing, you know, um, uh, also like, it's also a question of money, how much money you want to spend Absolutely. on a grinder. But at the end of the day, you know, it is important to have um, a very consistent grind size and, and very good particle distribution, because otherwise it's what you said, you know, you'll get this very uneven, uh, uh, yeah, grind that will also potentially clog up your paper filters, etc. cetera. Yeah, to so, be honest, I, if, sorry, if I can jump in there. Go ahead, please. It, it's the reason why I really recommend that people, rather than buy a cheap grinder, they regularly visit their local roaster for wonderfully uh, roasted coffee. And yes. they ask the, ask the guys in the roastery to grind the coffee for them. And if you're going regularly and, having, and getting small quantities of coffee, which yep. are ground with a really good grinder, then although the intensity of the flavor might be reduced because uh, the coffee is not super freshly uh, ground, mm -hmm. the quality of the flavor, the quality of the extraction will be much higher. Okay. You less That's flexibility it. in terms of your recipe because you have to adapt the recipe to suit the grind. Um, but if you can do that, then the flavor at the end will be better than if you have uh, a, a really chaotic grind distribution yes. from a low quality yeah. grinder. That makes a lot of sense. All righty, we have another question here from Marielle Dado. We're going to put this on the screen. Would you recommend different grind sizes for different filter equipment? Uh, for example, V60, Chemex, Hario. I think that's uh, obviously a very important question. Uh, that, uh... Yes. I mean, I think, so when I was talking about different grind sizes and, and dialing in uh, based on taste, um, I was talking about 
you know, it being for a given recipe. Now, Matt and Wendelin will be able to tell you in their presentations uh, later, you know, how you can really dial in your brews. Um, I think that remaining flexible and changing your, your grind to suit the recipe um, is, is key. So I think, I mean, you have an AeroPress there on your table, Alex, that's perhaps a really good example of um, how we would adapt the grind size. If, you're, if you want a short, fast AeroPress brew, you've got a much lower contact time. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want a long extended AeroPress brew with a longer contact time, then maybe you want to go coarser because you need to slow down the extraction a bit. Now the same if, you yeah. have, if you've got a Hario filter paper and a Chemex filter paper, which is a bit thicker, yeah. then the Chemex filter paper might slow down your brew a bit more. So maybe you want to go coarser, but up your dose of coffee so that you can still extract enough flavor, but you're not slowing down the brew so much. Uh, right. So that you still get a nice uh, extraction time uh, in total. Okay. Um, so, like I said, find a tried and tested recipe with some recommendations, and then adapt the grind to suit. Perfect. I've got another question here from Melody, which I think is also quite an interesting one. Let's put this one on the screen. How does the density and also the processing method affect how the bean breaks during the grinding process? Um, so that's what I was looking at on the final slides. So if you want to have a look at my screen again, let me go back yes. to back to that. Um, the the different densities we can see in different beans here, it, it has huge. They look like roast on, beef. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they, they look like roast beef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beef Wellington Close. or something. Yeah. Um, so um, the different uh, varieties um, and different processing and different densities. Yeah, so here, for example, with the Robusta, um, we have two different processing techniques. One is yep. uh, a natural, one is yep. washed. So um, here we can see, and this is generally the case, it won't be universal necessarily. Always be ready to adapt to your coffee. But generally speaking, a washed coffee tends to be more brittle. Um, you, if you look at these pictures here with larger pockets inside, imagine these pockets um, as crust, like on a loaf of bread. So these inner surfaces, every time they get broken, they're going to create more dust. So you would tend to find that like a washed Ethiopian, for example, which is also very dense, is going to create a huge amount of uh, these super fines, which means that in terms of you dialing in your brew, maybe you want to, again, up the dose, but go a bit coarser so that you reduce the quantity of fines. All right. Let's see what else we've got here. Well, unless Melody replies in the chat, we won't know for sure. But uh, okay. I think uh, <laughs> anyone who wants to uh, send, have... send Commandante an email, I, I'll get it. Exactly. It, uh, can help. Exactly. All right. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, let's put this one on the screen. Is the particle uniformity always the aim, or is it, uh, or I, I guess it's, uh, or does it depend on the taste uh, of the resulting brew? Is it possible to have that's less really particle uniformity question. yet still have a delicious brew? Uh, that's a really good question, really interesting actually, because I know that lots of people experiment with effectively changing the particle distribution of the coffee they're using. So uh, they would do that generally by using sieves. Um, so I've seen lots of people using Groove Sifter, for example. Yep. Um, and actually that's a really fantastic tool if you have um, maybe a more entry level grinder, or if you're stuck um, in an Airbnb somewhere and you have no coffee grinder with you because you forgot your Commandante and uh, you do find a sieve and some, uh, some kitchen paper. I know I can't take credit for this. This was Jane, Jane Postman's uh, video, um, <laughs> but you can use that system to reduce the, the fines if you have too many of those and reduce the boulders if you have too many of those. Um, I think from lots of competitors that we're in contact with who uh, take part in uh, Brewers Cup competitions, 
if you brew a coffee using a very narrow range of particle distribution, so you've removed as many of the fines as possible, removed as many of the boulders as possible, then you might have a very balanced um, extraction. But lots of people would argue that you have a very monotonous flavor. So some people might just find that boring. You lose complexity because the fines and the boulders, they all play an important role in the overall extraction. I, we would never say that fines and boulders are evil, that you, uh, things that you want to get rid of. They all have an important role to play because the, the fines are going to help you increase um, body and, and sweetness because they extract very quickly. And even some will be able to get through the filter into your cup. And boulders, which extract more slowly, might give you a bit more of the sort of sparkiness, the brightness um, that many people will be wanting, especially if it's a fruitier coffee. Yeah. So when we developed the Commandante burrs, we did that aiming at a particle distribution, which gives us the best of all worlds. So um, what we, I mean, you have to accept that you're always going to have a bit of everything. The question is how much and how that then tastes. And yeah. it's also not to say that for that reason, the Comandante is the best grinder in the world. We're really happy with how it performs, but it's always going to be a taste preference as well because different grinders would produce different particle distributions. And for some people, um, one particle distribution from one grinder might just taste better to that person than another. Um, it's so incredibly subjective at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's always a taste a taste preference thing. Um, I, I like to think about uh, music and EQs. It's like, um, for example, um, if you take an EK43, which has a huge burr, very powerful machine. Um, if you put coffee through that machine, you create a huge amount of dust. Um, you get a lot of the size you want. Um, and it's a bit like turning the bass up on the music. So it's going to give you this fat taste, um, sweetness, but you might lack a bit of flavor clarity because the super fine particle is very high. If you compare, um, a Comandante to that, um, the Comandante is going to have less of those super fines. So it might have a lower body, um, but it might give you a bit more clarity. Um, but it's a taste preference thing. I think we're happy to be in the same league as, as grinders like that. Amazing. Cool. All right. I've got another question here from Zia. I'm going to put this one on the screen. Is there a proven connection with roasting that the roasting process can be calibrated to improve the grind distribution? Good question. You're asking someone who's not a roasting expert. I think that roasting, a I mean, roasting a coffee affects the density. Uh, it affects the brittleness which definitely has an impact on particle distribution. Um, but as we saw before, different rows, different coffees, everything's going to go through the same grinder differently. So yeah. I think for roasters, it would always be important to be calibrated to themselves and their grinder in their roastery so that they can uh, roast the coffee, grind it how they always grind it, use the water they always use, taste it how they always taste it, and then evaluate the taste. And then uh, the barista or the home brewer after that is just aiming to use the recipe they like or know, um, change the grinds to adapt to that coffee and that roast, uh, and get the best taste out of the coffee for them. Right, wonderful. That okay, was my long-winded time... way of saying I'm not really sure because I'm not a roaster. <laughs> well, maybe we can ask a, a, a roaster. Uh, actually, Taylor Brown, our next next speaker, uh, is Taylor a very Brown. talented Taylor roaster. And she'll she might know a little bit more about this. Um, OK, we probably have time for two more questions. And then we're going to um, take a short break. Let's see. Um, what have we got here? Does the roast level? OK, we just had that already, something like that. Um, all right, I'm going to put this one here on the screen. Should we be extremely cautious about extra small particles while grinding? Should we sieve them? Um, sieve, I sieve, think that. Sieve. Sorry, did you want to say something? No, no, I was just I was just reading out the question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go ahead. Um, I th I think I mean as we saw in the presentation before, if I flip uh, back to that uh, slide, comparing espresso and filter, the super fine particles always increase as you adjust the grind finder, uh, as you adjust the grind finer. Sorry, um, and. These super fine particles are maybe the ones that are going to be more likely to block your filter paper if you're doing a pour over. Um, you can see why 
adjusting the grind when you're brewing espresso um, has a huge impact on the speed that your shot runs as well, because obviously it's changing the resistance, uh, the, the coffee resisting to the water that's being pushed through it. And the super fine particles will help block the flow of the water. Yeah. Either through an espresso puck or through a, through a coffee filter. All right. Cool. I have a question for you. Um, so I, <laughs> I tend to lose track of the amount of clicks um, that I've uh, set my grinder to. I think a lot of other people might have the same issue. Um, okay. Do you have a version with a little counter or are you planning to introduce one? <laughs> uh, no, there's a good reason for that just in terms of the, the system that we have. So if I hold that up close, um, there was a photo of it in the presentation as well, but we have no numbers. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is that with 12 notches on the burr, we have 12 clicks in one full, ro full rotation, but we mm -hmm. have way more uh, available click settings than 12. Uh, every time I adjust this uh, grind setting by one click, I'm changing the target particle size by 30 microns. So that's like uh, half the width of a blonde hair every time I change, mm -hmm. the, uh, change the grind setting. Right. So the important thing is just to know what zero is. And the easiest way to do that is just to close the burr all the way. Um, and for me, you can see this is open because the burr is able to move. If I keep going finer and finer, then I'll find the point where uh, it stops falling. If I hold it horizontally. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now the burr is in contact, the, uh, the burr cone with the outer burr. And if I open one click, you can see it's going to fall. So if yeah. this is open. and that's closed, then closed is zero and open is one. And if mm -hmm. I go coarser from here, then I can count more clicks, two, three, four, five. And if you yep. lose where you are, simply close it again until you find the point where the handle stops falling and open back from there. And All right. uh, there's uh, a YouTube video that I did um, on a Commandante Grinder channel showing you all of that, um, okay. including for red clicks. Someone just asked, yeah, red I saw that question too. microns, exactly. Red clicks is like a half step. Wow, all so, right. Uh, you can always cool. stay, stay dialed. Thank you so much, Joe. It was a pleasure to have you as the second speaker of the Virtual Coffee Festival. We're um, not even halfway through yet, so I hope everyone is uh, um, enjoying some coffee at home, taking notes, or um, simply sharing their experience on Virtual Coffee Festival. Um, uh, on our Instagram account uh, uh, using hashtag virtual coffee festival. We are going to uh, check the donation button uh, problem that we have here. Alternatively, we will put a um, button to donate via PayPal. That's also possible. I want to thank you, Joe, for being here today and taking the time out on a Sunday to be part You're of this uh, event. Uh, we are going to take a short break and then we'll be back with our next guest, Taylor Brown from TaylorMade. Have fun, guys. See you later. Ciao.